Hello, hello, and welcome to this new course. So today we will uh, learn um, how to build an amazing application thanks to Slim. Slim framework will really help your life and it will make all the difference for your next application. You will see it will be game changing. It will be an amazing journey uh, and uh, let's do this right now. I'm just closing some tabs I have. Uh, right, right, right. Uh, I, oops, I don't want to be in Argentina. Um, I want to be back where I am in Australia. I don't know if you use VPN in my case, it's because um, sometimes, quite often, when I work um, for my um, when I work on some side projects, uh, I like to be um, on um, in a coffee shop and I like to work from a coffee shop when I write books, when I um, contribute to some open source projects and so on. And uh, obviously the hotspot there, um, it's not safe. You, you have to be careful. And because you are using a not a safe internet connection, um, it's much safer to use a VPN to encrypt your data. Okay, now let's dig into our Slim uh, project. And so now, right now, let's, I will uh, open a uh, terminal and here I will go to my code project, uh, my code um, folder. And from here, I will actually start installing our project. But first of all, um, you have a lot of ways here, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, just try to see how the component so, so normally uh, let's have a look um, and oh, I want to check the version so perfect v2 is amazing so we can uh, create our slim um, sim skeleton actually um, it's uh, uh, oops, it's not this <laughs> it's that one it's like a skeleton for a project Slim skeleton, yeah, it's that one, and um, it has. It's not really a boilerplate. Uh, I don't know if you know the concept of a boilerplate. Here it's more lightweight. It has just the street minimum, but I think it has already a controller. Oh no, not even. Um, oh, let's see. Yeah, application. It has some minimum. Um, some minimum files inside so it's uh, it makes your life much easier uh, if you check on slim if you just get the framework you have just slim actually however here when you use uh, the slim skeleton it makes also your um, application more consistent because the uh, folders are already in there and actually you have php di php di which is uh, this one uh, dependency injection, um, it made it actually much easier to do the DI, the, the so dependency injection container inside of your project. And um, as you can see, you will create a project and then you will go inside and uh, you can actually even use Docker. So Docker is already um, set there and then you can just run it in the browser. So it's just awesome. So we will uh, install the project and we'll use um, a name of the project. So in my case, I will just uh, use um, simple project. You know, you don't have to make it complicated. You know, it's always much easier and in the long term, it's, it's always it will be always simpler to make everything simpler as well. Um, here I wanted to show you as well the, uh, the Slim Skeleton uh, structure. So if you go to this URL, uh, I don't know if you see it, but it's this one. And in this one, you have the structure of a basic Slim uh, Skeleton framework. And so it shows, um, you know, you have a lot of different folders. So uh, in SRC, so in the source uh, PHP project of your um, of your application, you have action, and this con uh, contains all the controller actions. That's the application layout. 
and the domain is the business logic uh, inside um, factory where all the factories, all the classes and so on, responder and middleware. I really like this kind of uh, structure because it's really similar to the um, uh, action domain responder. Actually, it's that um, they probably yeah, they, they use action domain responder um, pattern instead of MVC. So if you can see, if you type, if you can see, if you type a uh, um, and uh, yeah, let's say action domain responder. And they don't use MVC before with Sim3. Um, it was mostly um, MVC people would use, but nowadays MVC is a bit outdated and Action Domain uh, Responder is the standard one. So when you go here, you will see that we speak about it, or even for the version 3 actually, but not the version 2. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the version 2, I think, or oh, that page is not even there. But um, let's go back to our version 4 and oops, oh no, actually it's we really see it. Um, yeah, so at, at least for the version 4, it, it explains you um, how to deal with this. And um, they will uh, show you, you know, they, they show you, they explain to you how you can deal with the action domain responder. It's um, it's really uh, helpful actually and oh yeah that's a article about uh, this pattern and uh, yeah I suggest you obviously to have a look to this article and um, and so I do they mention about the MVC oh yeah now for simple case like this using idea or even website I see one seems like but yeah it's so they don't mention any uh, downsides with MVC, but obviously, uh, at least that's my opinion, um, the idea um, pattern is much better for a lot of different things, especially especially because you have only actions and not controllers, and so you use the um, single responsibility from solid principle. So uh, when you have a controller uh, in the controller, Usually you would have a user controller and that class does a lot of things because in one controller you have a lot of actions. Here, however, if you have one, um, just one action per file, it would be uh, just, you know, just a, a single responsibility, it doesn't have any other things. And also it's much easier to test because uh, for your unit test, it will make your life much easier to test a controller. is never, never easy because it includes a lot of different objects and you might uh, create some objects inside of some actions in your controller. And so it will make even the test much harder and much more difficult. But when you have just an action, it's much easier because you just have to test basically a function because in an action is still a class, but you use invoke, um, invoke, sorry, uh, action, PSP, class. And so this is like, it's like you call it as a function. Um, method is called when a script is, yeah, it's like, uh, yes, you see, call an object as a function. So it will make everything much, much simpler. If you type here, action, domain, Responder. Um, here you can see the intention, and they will. Oh, they even speak about symphony. That's really interesting. Um, but and this is where we were actually for Slim. So yeah, uh, I it, it it's nice because you are learning directly from the good um, principles, the good um, habits you need to do when you create a, a new um, project. With PHP. So let's go inside of our project now. Beautiful. Um, now we just we will create bit by bit our application step by step. And so um, let's go and let's get started. Uh, slim PHP obviously it's very slim, 
so we don't have much already in there. Um, it's just the basic actually, so uh, don't expect too much for database, for everything actually, you will need more things. So uh, let's uh, see if they, do they offer a small tutorial I can uh, upgrade, web, deployment, um, overview. So there are some middlewares, and, uh, but even for the session, uh, they don't really offer a way for the session. I mean, they don't really have a package for the session, I think, if I remember well. Uh, for us, oh yeah, that's for the web server. Um, good, good, good. Um, the application, that is cookbook. Uh, Trailing, enable, get files in the form. Uh, let's just try to see. Okay, so no, for us, we will just um, start right away. And, um, and we, oh yeah, that's to start with the PHP server actually. So we can already see, um, we can run the PHP server. That's obviously the web PHP server is, um, it's only for development purposes. It's not for production, definitely not. It's just the inbuilt uh, PHP server. And now our application is running on the port 8080. So if you go there, you will see hello world. And the hello world actually is, uh, I will actually open, I will show you where it is. I will first open the project with VS Code. And uh, trust, yes, I do. Uh, so let's search for um, for Hello World, or oh, we don't need this. And it's here actually. Oh, no, sorry. It's, uh, it should return that to one. So, router, yes. So um, the Hello World is here. So if I modify it to Hello, and then I want to use the name, so if I do um, respond, if I do something like you get um, I just will hmm, I'm not let's see what what we have there no, I'm getting confused. Um, so request, um, if I do name, get name, and from here we should, um, let's just have a look to a name. Um, if you do, if you go to user guide, and you go to, um, maybe it has actually already something, an example here. Get method. Uh, oh, it's from the argument and name. So if we add this argument array in our project, so we'll, we'll add it here. That will be an argument, and so we will do argument, and here name, and that should be this was S. And this one should work. Let's have a look. Let's just restart our server, and let's check it to um, again to the UI. So this one. And oops, I just have a small issue. Get it's get. Um, let's have a look. Sometimes this happens. So um, get name. Um, what's going on here? Um, right. I will just have a look. Um, in my slim PHP to um, cookie, no, 
if you do sometimes it's nice to search um, so yes basically um, let's see how we can display it, the name this is exactly what we are doing actually and we write the name and that's the name and the name comes from the argument so I will just copy paste and that's a good way actually to see the difference and to see what we didn't do right so if I go here obviously uh, let's just copy paste it here so get ready right hello I have a job for that time I don't need to that same here we just use the uh, concatenation um, operator I oh, just have my alarm uh, I will just I will be back in a sec okay I don't I don't even know why I had an alarm it's 9 p.m. for me and yeah I don't know anyways so um, agreement um, let's have a look here you see here it's a little bit different is it because of this so the request and the response and the array well everything else is the same except this so let's just have a look very quickly and we will know if it is the case or not so we we'll save it and now we we'll check again to our um, on our server so obviously it's um, it's still here it says it's because of the user it has actually some issues with um, the way they validate everything so if we just sometimes it's nice to make it clear and um, let's remove this and let's just let's just reload resource not found so beautiful and now if I write my name I have must be a type of server account this is what I did just before beautiful so here I will do this and now if I save nice and you see now I have the name beautiful so that's a really simple request okay so here we are we are back here uh, that was the URL we got and now we will um, you know that's so we can just have a name as you can see and now we will go back to um, PHP Storm where actually we will uh, have some config files so here as you can see all my config files all my config files are located in app folder I have bootstrap database and so on settings actually bootstrap uh, I just created now and we'll dig into it in a minute um, sometimes you can see some examples on the web where actually it's not app folder where you have the config files but it's just a config folder or sometimes it's in the app folder you have a config folder sometimes it's a bootstrap folder but actually it's more or less the same so here because if you use a slim skeleton by default every config files are more or less located in the app in the yeah in the app folder so here you can see when you go to bootstrap.php uh, you will have to create that file and import the DI uh, container builder so the DI container builder it's this one this library and it's really an amazing library and we are importing that one and then we use a slim app and so as you can see here we require the vendor the vendor um, autoload.php autoload.php is to uh, be able to uh, load um, all the classes 
thanks to um, SPL auto load PHP, they use actually this one, um, but it's, on, it's under the hood. And actually, for your information, you can actually import uh, namespace before the uh, auto load. But however, you when you create a new uh, object and to when you instance um, the object uh, with the new operator, uh, the new keyword, you it's important that it's uh, below the auto load because otherwise you will have a fatal error. Uh, and yeah, a fatal error. It's because you um, the um, it won't find the the class because auto load wasn't before um, the instantiation of the of the class. And now here, as you can see, we uh, do the setup settings. And uh, we actually add the container.php uh, file. We will have to create that file in a second. And here we use uh, the PHP DI, so the dependency injection, um, injection uh, container. And after later on, as you can see, this uh, syntax might be a bit um, weird for you at first because we, when we require, we have two parentheses because the two uh, parentheses are there to, uh, to load the content of the router. And then we actually, um, if you go to the router, it, we return a function. And so it's like, it's, um, it's a function. And then here it's, uh, it's the argument of this function. You see, it's like this one, it's this one, and that one we actually wrap it in the parentheses to like it's a function. So first it sounds weird, but it's exactly like we would do, because we return the function, but it's like we have that function, and it's like we do like this, you see? So now, in our bootstrap.php, we will actually create, we will get um, um, env variables. So in variables, uh, we'll create actually a .env file and as well as a .env.sample file or it can be um, .env.example file. That file will be committed and the other, the .env file won't be committed and it will be with all the um, sensitive uh, credentials, such as the database credentials and other things you don't want to share in your Git history. So here I'd already just um, downloaded and installed uh, the .env uh, package. So it's as simple as that. Composer require Vorecast, so Vorecast and php.env slash php.env. And once you have that package installed, you can start using um, the power of the .env file. So in my case, I want it first because I would like to use uh, in settings.php, I would like to use this production mode instead of having by default three or four, then you have to change it to three or four in the settings.php. I want to have it in a more dynamic way. So for the display errors details, I will actually, it will use the in variable production mode. And so in the .env file, um, you can create in your root project, I already have production underscore mode and I will load, I will load, sorry, I will load my .env um, library in bootstrap.php. So I will just do this, .env, and here I will actually import the namespace. So I will do like this, and then I will create, uh, I will use create immutable. And when you use create immutable, is the um, uh, recommended um, function, uh, static function 
to uh, load your um, env file and with that one you can't use um, get in function and put in function so you can't use uh, if I go to packages and I will go to dot env um, blogcast slash php dot env they actually explain to you create immutable you can to use actually the um, where was it so mm -hmm. if I search or oh, yes get in V so you see when I put in V and get in V using get in get in and put in is strongly discouraged because actually those functions are not thread safe it's highly recommended to use an env uh, global variable instead otherwise you will have to use the static function create on save immutable so for us we will use the env um, global variable instead so let's do it and um, also i don't know if you have noticed here we can also use require to say that one in variable one env variable must be there in your in file so that means if one is missing in your in file in your dot in file it will throw an exception it will throw an exception oops sorry so um it's quite nice actually if you really want to make sure that a, a variable in your in file is uh, is there is present you should use um required um function like like now how we do now so at least we are sure that the production mode will be there so now we can save that file and here in our settings.php we will simply use that way finally something we shouldn't forget to do is simply to have our um, .env file um, added in the git ignore file if you add your env file in the git ignore file you are sure that that env file with the sensitive uh, information won't be committed when you commit your code so when you will do now we don't have commit um, set if you do git commit it will say no git is not there but when you do git int and if your .env file is not present in the git ignore um, file if you do git status you will see it it will be in, you will see it's here and we don't want that file to be committed so we will have to add that one in the git ignore so that way we are sure that uh, no private sensitive information will be committed and this is the same for any other sensitive files they should be added always in the git ignore file also something also that you don't want to to have and where it's a good idea to have that file is the git attributes file that file actually it's really important because when you uh, publish your project somewhere like in packages you know when you download actually a package from packages with a composer uh, tool well you don't want uh, usually you don't want uh, to have um, unnecessary files like you don't want to have all the test files because it's just for your project so when you uh, install um, a package or a library uh, for yourself and use composer install the name of the package you don't want to have um, unit tests or i don't know maybe it will be um, md files you don't want sometimes it can be even uh, the dot github uh, folder where you have all the um, github settings that one is also unnecessary sometimes it's uh, the contributing.md file you don't want to have 
in um, in your distribution uh, folder. So the distribution folder is actually when you go to GitHub, we'll actually um, go to Firefox, and if you go to GitHub, you will see um, you can actually, or maybe even in Safari, I can uh, I can go. Um, I will see GitHub here. It will be even faster. And if you go there, um, oops, you will have a a way to export the uh, archive. And there, like I type, doesn't matter what project, it will be cache, PHP for instance, and I will um, go to that one. And here, you have the option to download a zip. And in that download zip, normally it's a distribution zip. And so when you add uh, files you don't want to be included, such as the git ignore um, file, the GitHub um, folder file, you don't want uh, to have maybe the docs perhaps uh, file, you don't want to have any uh, testing uh, files that are not related for the distribution. Code of conduct. Uh, contributing.md, those files, you see, you don't want to include them in the distribution file. And Composer actually includes them as well um, when you download a Composer package. So in most of the, um, most of the major projects, you will have a git attributes file. In my case, I did a commit uh, not not, I mean, maybe two years ago, actually, it was uh, on Brain, Brain Tree, you know, that payment uh, library gateway. And um, I will show you um, here. And it was in a pull request. Maybe it's still there because they don't receive a lot of pull requests. And so my username, PR7. Okay, so it's that one. You know, and this is what I did, actually, because I saw that that project didn't have uh, git attributes file. So indeed, it's a good idea to exclude the only did dev files from the final um, production zip archive file, which is downloaded by Composer. Indeed, a Composer will download um, that production zip archive. I just show you um, before. Um, so it's um, it's from uh, it's from that one. You see that one. And uh, now, obviously, I don't know, I don't want to download that one. And um, and so, except obviously useless uh, unless um, the prefer source is specified, which is not. And so, for the people that are not really familiar with that one, um, you can read actually those two uh, links, really interesting links. So basically, what you have to do is just mentioning the the file name, and then mentioning export ignore. So it means that the, exp the you will ignore that file during the export. And here, that travis.yaml is not necessary because it's only for tests. Um, PHP unit file whatsoever is not necessary either. And it's a really good habit to do this. And so that's the two um, links I suggest you to read if you're not really familiar with, um, with the git attributes um, export ignore file. So that's one of the link. And the other one is this one, actually. So yeah, so that's uh, my suggestion. So now here, uh, we will continue actually uh, developing our, uh, our Slim4 app. So uh, that's actually the final uh, Git attributes um, file version. You should more or less have if you wish. And here now I want already to run my application to see what's going on here on our, on on the application. So I will actually edit the configuration and I don't want in my case, I want the stable application to run. So it will be PHP building web server, that's a one. Um, here we just have different ports apply and here I need to mention also the interpreter option so just need to see oh no that's it's already um go here interpreter php 8 um 7.4 apply ok and let's see how it goes 
Slim up. Here it is. And um, there's just again some issues we need to fix. Um, it's about our interpreter. The path is not found as you can see. So uh, we actually we need the bin, the binary um, file PHP. We open that one, apply. Ok, ok, beautiful. Let's see how it goes so far. Let's run it. Let's go here. Ok, so it looks working, however, uh, because our Steam application, we have to change the path to public actually to that folder. That's the path we want our application to start from. So it will be public. This is just for our dev um, environment. Um, on production, you shouldn't have public. You should have everything to be in the root. I mean, not everything that is in public should be in the root folder, and everything else should be in a protected um, folder outside of the um, uh, folder where anyone can access to folders from uh, a web browser from, from uh, outside. So, um, so like basically here, everything that app folder and so on, everything else, all folders except public should be outside of the root public HTML folder, and the public um, folder should be in the public underscore HTML folder, or maybe the name of the folder is different. Sometimes it's web app or something like that. So now let's try to run it again. We stop and run it again, and let's go here. You see, it works very well. We just have an error, but that's actually okay. It's in the settings. Actually, it says that uh, production mode constant doesn't exist. It's undefined. So let's go to um, to the settings file, and here you can see production mode. No, maybe it's not defined because. It's in the um, PHP in file. Um, if you go here, in V, it's here. However, I believe PHP dot um, that file actually, I believe, is not loaded, and that's a problem. When it's not loaded, uh, how PHP can know uh, the file is loaded or not? So let's go to Bootstrap um, and let's see dot inf um, normally it should be loaded because we load that one but apparently if I do exit let's see if this file is reached or not I think that file is not you see that file actually is never called so if we go to index here you see uh, settings let's see where settings dot php you see that file actually we need bootstrap before that's a problem because that file is code first but the bootstrap file is not code and that one actually load uh, the dot in file so it has to be just before so let's call bootstrap dot php and now let's try again to rerun the server Let's see how let's see how it goes. You see now it's fine. I mean more or less fine because actually we have an invalid path exception, and actually our file is not found in app. I think it's because we simple app and actually our dot invince the root file and not here. That's a problem. It's not in the app folder. So what we we'll have to do is to do this, just to go to the parent folder. So from app to here. Uh, oh, sorry. That's actually not. Well, uh, that's actually not for the dot env file. So for us, it will be here. So we we'll actually do 
their name to go actually to the um, parent folder. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with their name, but their name, it's actually, it returns a path, but it goes to one path, one sub path, like one path um, behind. Uh, if you go to the, to the official doc, Um, here, we just have to wait that the page um, is loaded. Okay, beautiful. And as you can see here, their name, we are in etc password, and now we are in etc. So this is what we want. So let's see now. You see, uh, now it works already much better. It found the, the path. We just have another error, which is container builder cannot be without a speed. So um, I also want to show you um, why sometimes it's good not to use this kind of numbers. It's not always nice. It's always nice to store them in a constant. So it's actually um, a good practice to store them in a constant. Uh, we call them a magic number, and magic number are not really good. And it's always nice to to store them as what we just said, <laughs> I just repeat myself, but in programming, so magic numbers, uh, in computer, in computer programming, the term magic number has multiple meaning, it could refer to uh, magic number. Um, <laughs> the term magic number also refers to bad programming practice of using numbers directly in source code without explanation. And that's why it's much more, uh, a much better way, it's a much better habit and much better practice to store them in a constant with clear and explicit names. That way you know exactly what the number refers to, you see? And in most cases, this makes programming harder to read, understand, and maintain. And it's so true, so, so true. Uh, yeah, I can't even ag agree more than that sentence. So uh, in our case, we use uh, teapot. Teapot um, packages It's a good uh, library with all HTTP uh, status codes. So we just install that one. Let's do it. You have different libraries actually, but that one is good. Uh, let's see if still the year 2000, or oh, actually it hasn't been updated for a while. I, I will see now if we don't have another library. That, that one was the one I used to use. I mean, I was using before. HTTP, oh, what HTTP, that's different. That's good. Um, Depot, nearest package that works with HTTP statuses, but 100. No, I mean now it's just constant, so it doesn't it, it doesn't need to be updated. But you know, sometimes with the different um, versions of PHP, it's sometimes important that our package is updated. So this one, 2020 minimum. Let's have a look to that one. And that one, small PHP library is really accessing the records. Yes, but I think installs 42. Let's have a look here. Um, <laughs> minimum. So there are tests. I mean, hopefully, sometimes you just have actually the test folder without anything but here. It looks better. Um, in direct, perfect. Let's see how I can be good and how. Oh, I don't. I just want to use constant, not only. So how he does it for the class. HTTP um, Let's see if it works or not
like if I want the not font the test code, the 404 oh yeah, I'm not sure if I like it let's try to use another one because there are, I think uh, there are languages as well and we don't need that for our library it does things we don't need actually so let's see here HTTP pattern is really simple and this kind of library is just what we need actually so that's good but I'm not sure if they have everything for three I mean all um, status codes let's see yes uh, four seven yeah, that's good. It's the kind of test we want. So, this is not bad. We might use that one. I could also even create mine. But at the end of the day, you know, it's always really similar. PHP 8, but what was the difference to commit what he did? Oh, just for that one. Oh yeah, okay. Good to know. Um, so let's see who it is. Okay, I think that one is, is a good candidate. It's what we need so far. Um, oh, it's actually that one. It's just, yeah. Um, because the other ones, yeah. You also have that one, but again, I think that one is from a framework, no, it's not. It looks like, but again, I think that one is not, it does more than what we need. Also, it's nice to see, by the way, the license, under what license, yes. Yeah, we just want to code, actually, the HTTP. Code, but that one looks really good it's just what we need really simple and the license and under what license it is he doesn't mention it sometimes you can just then see a file I mean the source code and he doesn't mention it okay um, but should be fine it's public so actually that one is not uh, all the constants as you can see they are public so we need uh, for our project um, public constants is only PHP 7.4 let's see um, public so we can't use in um, in the PHP version lower than PHP than that PHP version but that's fine for us because in our case it's we will use we will use the latest version Oh, it's PHP, sorry, PHP 7.1, uh, 7 yes. So that's okay. Um, usability, wait, constant. Perfect, I've got above. Hmm, they don't mention here. Public, yeah, 7.1, beautiful. Uh, so yeah, let's install that one for now and maybe later on we'll use another one but for now I think it's it's fair to use that one mm -hmm -hmm. and you know to use it is really easy so for us here we had a 42 so 42 you just uh oh I hope he has that one code 42 that's weird he doesn't because http status for tct yeah on process entity 42 hmm apparently he doesn't mention all or everything oh yes i think yeah added http 42 and he didn't merge that one I have no idea why he didn't merge it, but yes, we need, <laughs> that's a bit annoying, 
we just want to use this here. We see then what solution we can do. Uh, I think Teapot they do 42. Uh, the one I, I showed to you before. So composer packages 42 and Otherwise, you know, we just create our own library with all um, available status code. I think that will be the easiest. But Teapot, they have all of them normally. Oh, they, it doesn't. Okay. But you see, yeah, he has a lot of status code. That's different ones. Uh, exception, status line. Hmm. Where are the ones? Let's have a look. Mm. Nope. Nope. No. Where are you see six years ago? That's still that's just four, or maybe he I think he he is using another package from him. I mean, that teapot doesn't use just his package, he's using another package. This is why we don't see it here. I remember now, um, teapot, yeah, they are using another package. And if you oh, so if you have a look to composer.json here, you will see uh, he requires um, teapot status code. So if you go to probably store there as well, status code. Oops, let's have a look here in on packages teapot status code so that's the one part of the teapot array this part of all status code and exception yeah perfect and here and actually that one is 2020 uh, the last release let's see here and normally here you should have the 42. Oh, oh no, that's not yet. HTTP all. Hmm, no. Uh, vendor oh, is probably. You know, there, there are a lot of classes here. The opposite of the other one. Yeah, it's here. Nice. Um, but we can't use directly that one. Um, as I remember, but at least he's using it. So let's use Teapot for now. So let's just um, uninstall the package we just installed. Let's do this. Oh, it's remove actually. Uh, it's funny because with npm it's uninstalled, but with um, with Composer it's require and remove. So now we just remove that one and we will, we will actually install Teapot. Um, I hope or oh no, they probably don't use this later, latest version because the other package wasn't really uh, updated. Or maybe because 1.1.2 and the other one, yeah, it should be fine. Uh, so. HTTP code, teapot, beautiful. Let's, let's install that one. Status code. Oh, that's the other one. And that's actually on teapot PHP repository. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. 
nice but can we use just um but status code yeah i think we need the other library let's install that one then <laughs> yeah, that one is the easiest to use pigeon. Maintainer. Yeah, it's funny because that one is looks like to be on his profile and not the other one. Sometimes you see it's a little bit confusing, but yeah, the part. And you just want what we want. It's oh yeah, it's about this that there's nothing there. <laughs> um, but yeah, sometimes you can also have a look to some projects uh, where uh, they use it. Uh, obviously not like this, but like this, and you can find in some different um, repos. Obviously here because I'm not logged in, I can't see that but if i go to firefox oh i think i'm not logged in with um with github so far but i will just install um anyway the library for now so what we do is composer require oops and um yeah no i probably don't have um my github ac uh, account logged in for now and you know it always takes some time to um it takes a bit of time to log in because i need uh, to enter my two-factor authentication code and so on so it just uh, i won't have a look how they are um, installed elsewhere on uh, some in some github repos or they will actually uh, install it that's the correct way this is how i did in different projects so it will be fine and now we can you see as what they said here we can just use teapot status code that's amazing we install at this and now and so the http as uh, the 422 as we have seen um As we have seen before in the other repository uh, again perhaps we do the pot that was the one so sometimes when you don't know the constant you just type but in my case it's 422 is that one beautiful oops yes unprocessable entity and um, yes, normally the constant should be uh, teapot. Oh, because I forgot to use the use keyword. So now, oops, should be fine. Hmm. Let's again double check. Why it doesn't why it doesn't highlight my constant status code? Mm -hmm. Normally it should work. Wait. That one yes. Well, we are not lucky for that one. I mean we are but sometimes um <laughs> because that one is from a different um It's um it's maybe from a different class. We have to import. Let's. I thought all of them would be actually would do the same, but apparently not. Um. Yeah, I think so. If we do, um, I will just 
Um, I still not. Maybe it's my um mm -hmm. so yeah, I will I will install that class and I will import that interface and that should be fine actually because it's not from there of course. So yeah. Let's do Oops, I think that we are sorry, I just closed <laughs> my uh, PHP Storm, but we we'll just open it again and I will just actually import directly this class. So that way it should be all good because most of the classes are from status code, even if they are located elsewhere, it's that from here actually. Uh, status that from somewhere else. Because you see in each class, yeah, that one HTTP, they extend from them. All extend from the others. Do they extend to the one we want in another class? Perhaps. Let's have a look. So do they extend this one? Um, the RF C. Do they extend it somewhere? Or here, they extend the class. We can actually use this one normally. Um, let's see the namespace just to be sure. Yes, yes, it is good. So normally, now it should work all good so um after that since i want the four to do here if i now just import here oops oh yes it works you see nice amazing so let's do that way for now and you see, so here, oh, let's not import this for now. So we import that. That one we can also, it's a package.json. That one I want to commit. Beautiful. So, and now I can just say um, use, use, um, Let's, so we can just say, let's not part for HTTP statuses. Beautiful. Oh, and I need double code. That's it for now. Hi again. I hope you are still well. And here in, uh, still in the simple project we are doing with Slim for PHP framework. Uh, we actually have changed a bunch of files and we factored um, a few folders. And here actually we can, because it was actually, um, our project was from Slim Skeleton, uh, Slim Boilerplate, but I think it's actually Slim uh, Skeleton, it was Slim 4. Let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah. Sim framework for skeleton. It was actually initially created from um, that um, from that um, boilerplate. So uh, we have a lot of obviously a lot of folders that we don't need. Like this one, actually, we can just remove applications so far for now because I don't see I don't think we still need something from there. So let's remove it by now. And in my case, I also wanted to install a library uh, because on our user creator, you see, we are gonna to do this and we want actually to use a PHP uh, validation library 
to, act, to actually uh, validate username and email. I tried to find some good libraries already on packages, but actually there are two good ones. One, I much prefer the syntax. Uh, the syntax is much better, but the um, the it's not actually updated for a really long time. And the other one, I so that one, that one, the, the, I really like the way it's really similar to how you validate fields on um, on Laravel. So we really like the way it's really clean the way to validate everything. However, um, the library looks a bit dead and not really, you know, they don't update it that much. And so far, the latest version was uh, released in 2018. So, oh, that's funny. There was there's something in August 20, hmm, August 2020. So it might still be good then. Uh, could be actually, I will just see if we, because as you can see on master at least, the latest version was 2020. That's also the last commit at least. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of commits and updates. And basically, they, they, there are a lot of pull requests and they don't answer actually to the pull requests. So I think for us, it's wiser to use a different um, package, a different library. So the other one I have found is, uh, let's see, let's see where it is. Um, <laughs> Uh, should be somewhere, somewhere here. Um, maybe it was on the first page actually. Maybe it's just a name. I don't. Um, I don't look with with the right with the right keywords. Um, uh, because it's also quite a popular one, but somehow now. <laughs> I don't see it. Um, should be somewhere here. Um, <laughs> Open API no. Still not. Uh, I will see my um history actually. Validate. Validate which one? It's not that one. Okay, so let's go to um here. Maybe uh, the we mentioned the one I'm looking for. And the point, you know, they don't even mention that one. Hmm. So let's do like the best PHP. You see this? You have to do actually those kind of research sometimes. Sometimes it takes um, more time than you um, you plan actually that you initially planned, but you know this is part of the fun. And yes, it is what it is. Like sometimes it's harder. Or I think they mentioned that library here. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look where it is. Then well, that's. Sounds a bit old because now the framework has been renamed. Um, validation. Let's see, let's see. Maybe it was here then. Uh, oh, yes, finally. So from Vlucas, and that library is not bad. So let's install that one. So let's just do. Um, Composer require Vulcas valid um valid validron actually. It's funny the name is not validation, it's validron. So let's uh do this. This is maybe why I couldn't find for the package on packages, it's not the best name, but yeah, maybe it's because the author wanted to have his um package name unique. Uh and validation actually doesn't mean much, it's not a unique name. So let's install that package. And once it's 
Okay, so now it's installed and once it's installed, um, we will start to validate the fields. You see actually here, this is why I didn't really, I didn't really like um, how the library works because the syntax is not the most beautiful ones. But again, you know, again, it's you do with what we have. So at, uh, at the moment, we don't want to uh, write our own uh, library, our own uh, validation library because it will take too much time. So let's just, um, you know, let's just do some basic validation. So we just first import the, the library. Um, did it get imported? No. Okay. Um, somehow. Mm -hmm. So uh, I will just check the namespace. I think it's just valid home validator. That's it. So let's do this. Yes, it is. That's the correct um, namespace. And now we we'll use actually the short um, array syntax like this with a square bracket. And here we have to validate actually for uh, so what's required is username and email. Uh, we don't have name fields for the moment, and um, data we come actually here. Um, valid. I will call it validator. That's a way, um, this is a field we want to be required. So actually, we'll we'll have to mention here. Required and that's the two fields required. And then you see you can actually validate emails. It's really simple. It's just this email, email. So the field name and uh, the, the type what we validate and we want to validate as an email. And the other one is a username. So normally they mention how to uh, validate a username. Oh, I think I've seen it. Um, require. Let's have a look. Oh, require with now a lot of different syntax. Um, fields required no, 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 empty. If any other fields are present, okay. So password field will be required when you send in field. Oh, yeah, that's that, here. It's a different um, case. So for us, it's just required. And here, um, <laughs> I think there was a case for the username. Different, uh, like if we want to validate the name, let's see how they do for the for the length, for instance, uh, or for. To make sure that it's a string. Um, Length between all, oh, that's mostly what we want. So, yeah, this is exactly what we want actually. So, let's use that one for the second one. Validator. Again, rule. And so, that's a, the second actually parameter is a field name. If you go to the signature, you see rule and fields. So length between, and we we'll do two and max 16 maybe. And minimum username, it will be yeah, two, let's say. So you see, it's actually a simple library. So uh, now we can get rid of these. We can get rid of these and email. Yes, we can do this. So in case there's an error, um, so we have to end by validate. So does it throw exceptions? We don't know. Mm. What does it do? Um, hmm. 
interesting uh, or here so yes so we will do in our case it will be if validation actually validator is not uh, true we will actually throw that exception as you can see validator and then we can have the errors actually so we can um, show here this step input and then we'll just do validator and showing the errors um, I think that's an array, yes. So we should actually, um, maybe we will, um, how we display it? The errors, we do um, implode. I think that's a good idea. And um, so when you check um, what implode does, so you have the grid and then the array. So here um, we do, maybe a comma, just that will be to separate each errors. So let's do that way. And validator, that's, that looks fine. So yeah, all examples show that way. Yes. So actually, even if you check here, you see it returns a boolean. So yeah, it's as simple as this. Beautiful, it's it's very simple. So we just do that way. Email and then um, length between. Perfect. And here actually we can have a constant um, mean. Or even in the env file we have, that's a good idea to add it here. Um, mean username equal to max username equal 16 and so we will just um yeah i think it's fine actually to use the constant because we don't really need it in the env file yeah no we don't i mean we could actually but I would say it's not really necessary because normally we don't change username length really often. So we can just do mean length. Beautiful. So length, length, nice. So here we will do a private constant. That's a PHP 7.1. Uh, feature and so we can just do it that way and here to be max and because it's a constant um, it's a it's a class constant we need self to mention um, that actually self is it means the constant is is inside of the scope of the class so yeah just that way and that's it actually. So here, uh, that's the application now running and uh, we will actually just install um, a newer version for the HTTP uh, status codes because I will actually use another package because the package, the teapot package was good, but some, um, it's not really updated very often and I think it's a little bit heavy, so I just created this package and I will um, now I just released 1.1 1 .1, uh, version yesterday, so we'll just install that newer version because here actually I had version 1.0. So this it will just update the version as you can see here. Actually, when you want to upgrade um, Composer package. A good way, you don't even have to update a uh, composer.json and doing um, composer updates. No, you can just uh, install again the package, like what I just did, like this. Um, so you just go again here, so you have another package. You just go again here, 
and it will update automatically it will upgrade the package to, to the latest version now it depends also the parameter you have here in my case i want a version um it can be 1.9 but i don't want a major uh, breaking changes so it means it will never be a version 2 so actually you can even have a look to um, pick, um composer upgrade version um file I, it's in the doc um let's just go to the normal doc the the composer doc is quite good actually so um, let's have a look if they mention here it works more or less the same way than uh, how it it works with npn um so um, let's have a look i think we can say um it's not a tilt but uh, yeah let's do also tilt and guide the guide is this one so um and you know if you search for breaking um package of the version actually uh because um because so um at if you don't know um composer they actually use the semi um, semantic version so semantic version it means the first number is major version the second is um, minor version and the third version is a patch so everything usually when uh, version 2 becomes 3 is a major version with breaking changes the minor um, number is not a lot of uh, breaking changes and patch is just like security patches and stuff like that nothing uh, bad so here you can see actually in the doc about um kite so that's about um what you can update so uh it actually it means you see like here if you mention that one it will be from 1.2.3 until 2. so here it's because in our case it was still version 1 it wasn't version 2 so that's why it upgraded to version 1.1.0 and actually i will even commit um the update of my package i just did so we just commit as um update just is tp status code version to uh, 1.1 beautiful and now i will be able actually to use um this um http codes in my project i think i already did actually if we go to well actually actually i will just search oops i'll just search you see in user create action i already did it and it uses status code here for create instead of having um 201 um number hard coded i use a constant and this is quite nice because it's simple to understand it's simple to know what the number means we don't do typo with just a number and it's a it's a good um, convention it's a it's a good practice to actually use constants because actually when you hard code the number number doesn't mean anything we call it a magic number so um magic numbers are not really good so magic number meaning um programming so i will um uh -huh. What are my magic number in programming value? Um, let's say bad code. Yes, the term the term magic number also refers to the bad programming practice, indeed, of using numbers directly in source code without explanation. You see, because what a number means, it doesn't mean anything. In most cases, this makes programmers harder um this makes programs sorry harder to read understand and maintain i'm a bit thirsty okay i had my coffee um so you see that's why we actually use constants and there are a lot of constants in the package as you can see so you can see you can use so many and you see like if you have to use 505 usually the http codes that are not really common we don't know what it means and sometimes it's, it's easy to make a typo so that's why um, a constant is much more explicit it means oh yes 
this is version not supported. Okay, I understand. So each time you use a uh, with status with theme four, um, try to always use a constant. It's much more readable. If you um, search for in my in our project here, you see I uh, also updated that one in home edition for um, for the new HTTP code, and I can even um, here actually I can even do OK, and you will see it will then be um, actually we don't see the HTTP version right now. But um, if I I don't I don't know if I have Postman right here or oh, yes I do, so I will be able to show you easier because in our route um, if I go to app app folder is actually the the config uh, it has all the config files and in our case we go to roots. And here you see that one actually we give a a uh, 200 now because we change from created to OK. So you are here. I will paste it here uh, in Postman and let's see the HTTP status code is 200. And if I change to another one, so if I go back to created. As that's the other constant 201, it should be a 201. Let's see. You see, it's a 201. I can even set a internal error. Um, oops, an internal server error. So that one, oops, internal. Somehow, this a error and um, inter. Um, I probably did a typo, so that's in the full name. Uh, internal. Oh yeah, there was a typo. So if I uh, try again, now I have a 500. You see, this works perfectly fine. In our uh, user reader uh, file class, so in user service user reader. I also wanted to uh, point uh, to you that sometimes you have this kind of error with PHP Storm, and you can see it says that the typed properties are only available to uh, PHP 7.4. And our problem is because here, if you go to our composer.json file, it's uh, the minimum um, PHP version required is. PHP 7.2, so we will we can just uh, change two to four here in our composer.json and run composer, or you can just do here with PHP Storm. You can uh, use this um, this function switch to PHP 7.4. So automatically, when you click here, um, well, PHP Storm will will directly change to 7.4. Like this, or we can just keep it and we can do this. You see, as simple as this. And now we won't have any error anymore. So now we will uh, get rid of some uh, redundant commands because they are just not needed. So, first, here the input validation is a bit redundant because you know it's a bit explicit that uh, we do the validation just here with the you know we check. If the user ID is not empty, if it's empty, if it um, if the user ID was not uh, mentioned, we will throw um, an exception mentioning that the user ID is required. Uh, and actually, this uh, argument then it has to be optional too. We need um, null. I mean, it we need to say that it has to accept null as well. So we just update the um, Docker block here to mention that it can be null as well. Here you see these kind of commands are optional, I mean are redundant actually, not even optional, just with a comment. But it can be removed, so let's remove that one, let's also remove that one. And then here, uh, I think that's it. We can leave this doc block because we still mention, um, oh we don't, 
yeah, we should mention that um, it can throw this exception. Uh, yeah, and let's leave that one for now. This one, um, so this file again, we can clean up some um, obvious uh, things such as this command. You see, this uh, PHP doc block command is quite obvious that it's a constructor. I don't know why, but in a lot of code, you can see the constructor or things like that. However, in PHP, when you declare a um, constructor in your class, you declare it as this. So, um, underscore, underscore, construct. So it's quite obvious that it's a constructor. And the same here with the, with the argument, the user creator repository. Well, you know, it's kind of obvious that the parameter is user creator repository because thanks to uh, PHP 5.2 or 5.3, we can actually uh, mention um, the class type in as a parameter. Uh, it was actually available way before PHP 7 for um, a class object. Um, so not for, not for integer or for string, not for type, but for class it was. Uh, so we can just get rid of this because it's really obvious that this is actually um, the, the type, it's user creator repository, and it's obviously obvious that it's a constructor. So let's just get rid of this. Here, the same, um, the input validation, you see the name of the, of the method is validation new user. So it's again very obvious that uh, we validate the user data. So we can also get rid of this doc block. Remember that it's always much more, uh, much more, uh, a much better practice to name your methods, your uh, your functions, and your classes with very readable um, names rather than having a long comment. So you should always think about when uh, someone reads my code, when someone. You know, when you read your code, for instance, you should understand what your code does just by the name of the function, of the, the class, of, um, you know, the methods, and so on. Just by reading the here, the function name, the function name should be really clear and explicit. It should say exactly what it does. Like really, um, every function name should say what it does. So we can just read of this. And then what else? This comment actually as well, because that's redundant. And this one, you know, is commented. We don't need that one. We call it a, um, a boat anchor. So both anchor, it's actually a anti-pattern and it's when a code is not used anymore. So uh, when a code is not used anymore and if you, you know, if you want to, to keep that code just for the record or maybe you think that you might need it um, later on, well, you can always uh, check the Git history uh, nowadays we we commit our code, everything we do. So if you want to go back to the previous version or to know again what function you used in the past, in the past, you can just check the git history. So anti pattern, uh, oh sorry, bot, a uh, bot anchor. So a uh, bot anchor and programming anti pattern that occurs when a part of the system is kept by the system despite is is no longer having any use. So you see, this is what is a board anchor anti pattern. So we don't want this um, anti pattern. So we we will just get rid rid of this. And here we don't need that as well. We don't need this. Uh, the login actually we don't need to log this message. You know, insert user is kind of obvious because the, um, the function says exactly the same. 
So we can get rid of this button as well. Just leave a space. Here I will keep um, I will keep user ID uh, variable because it's not really explicit that user um, insert user returns the user ID. So it's nice to assign um, into the variable user ID um, the value because here it's obvious in the when we go to the signature of the method we can see in the doc block that uh, it returns actually the user ID. But here we don't know if it inserts a user ID or not. So it's better to um, assign the what the function returns into a new variable user ID instead of doing directly this. So we will keep this as as it is, like user ID and then return user ID. Uh, that's it for, for the cleanup of the user creator. So now here we can commit everything. So we just do git commit. Uh, PHP version will change it. So here we just do git commit um, change minimum PHP version to um, 7.4. Perfect. And the other commit will be, I use the P flag so we can see every change. So this is about, uh, that commit will be about the redundant command, uh, the redundant doc blocks, such as this one. You see, I will make uh, the terminal bigger. This one, these ones, yeah, and we can commit it. And the message will be uh, remove redundant commands. And we can even uh, prefix by, um, we can amend the, the commit to have um, to prefix cleanup. So we know exactly what it's about. And perfect. And here the other commit will be, uh, again, we change a little bit uh, of the type. So like, um, my, um, we'll do like add um, proper the type plus fix um, yeah actually I will do two commits because that will be too much it's nice to keep you know uh, to have really clean commit um, it's nice to have like one commit to do exactly what it says uh, and we if we have one commit that does a lot of different things that's not really um, clean and sometimes we have an issue and it's nice uh, for, for the record, to have uh, every commit should be very explicit and every commit should do exactly what it's inside of the commit. And here, um, so here we we'll do again, uh, that's for the constructor, so um, remove redundant doc block plus and indentation. So here actually there's two things but it's because it's part of the same uh, chunk, the same piece of code. So I cannot have, I cannot commit, yeah I could revert the code and just commit um, when I remove the doc block and then when I fix the indentation of the constructor but it doesn't work because then I will waste more time and that's fine because here it's just about one particular one specific uh, piece of code so we can do this indentation yes and now I can I can push it I can push the, the changes perfect that's done